Hello, today's video is going to be about common filters and alpha, beta, gamma filters. Alpha, beta, gamma filters are basically a simplified uh, common filter. I like alpha, beta, gamma filters because you get about 95% of the benefits with only about 5% of the hassle. Most of the information comes from this book, Dan Simon's uh, uh, Optimal State Estimation. Uh, it's a pretty good book. It does need some errata and uh, uh, it does, it's very light on workable examples. So that is what I'm trying to provide now. I also wanted to make this applicable to PLCs. So what I did is I decided to choose a scan time of um, 100, or let's see, 10 milliseconds, a hundredth of a second. Uh, I assume some resolution here in uh, meters. And the whole idea is I want to be able to simulate quantizing errors. Um, I picked this standard deviation for process noise for the acceleration. I'm going to do estimate positions, velocities, and accelerations in this example. And my um, standard deviation is uh, 0.1 meters. Usually it shouldn't be that bad, but uh, it just makes it so you can see some noise. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, simulate a constant velocity and we're following a constant velocity, and you can see that I'm using pi, see one hundredth of pi as my velocity. And the reason why I'm doing that is because every um, millisecond I'm going to be going 31 uh, millimeters uh, each time period, except for every once in a while. You can see that because there's a little extra here, it's going to go 32. So the number is going to be bouncing between. 31 and 32 millimeters every uh, millisecond, or um, oh, I guess I'm doing this by a factor of 10, so it'd be you know 314 millimeters or uh, 315 millimeters every 10 milliseconds. So I'm going to calculate what I call a true position or uh, actual position. I like to use the terms. Uh, uh, true, and then I have measured position. Measured position is obviously corrupted a little bit by measurement noise and quantizing errors. So that's what I'm simulating here, the measurement error. Um, measuring the position, you can see I'm adding sample jitter. The reason why I'm doing that is because PLCs uh, do not sample every 10 milliseconds. They're, sometimes the interrupts are off and the uh, scan time might be 11 milliseconds, 9 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. On the average, it'll be about 10 milliseconds. But still, there's going to be sample jitter because the sampling times are not constant. And then, given that, I calculate out a uh, this R, which is just a number in this case. Uh, sometimes it can be an array. But this is my uh, measurement covariance. And then I'm calculating the uh, process noise covariance, and this is using the uh, uh, standard deviation for the process noise. You can see it's I'm actually squaring it, so I guess it's the variance at this point. And it's a noise co covariance, so I have a 1, 2, and then this is the acceleration uh, 2 uh, times squared over 2. And then if I multiply uh, this times this one, I get this one. And if I multiply this times this, I get that. And you can see it's symmetrical about this axis. So this is the uh, uh, the process noise covariance. Now, this is the transition matrix, and the transition matrix is just um, estimating that it, a head is used to predict, and it's basically saying the state's going to do whatever the state was doing last time. So if I have a position, velocity, and acceleration, you can see the acceleration times this one will just mean the acceleration will not change. Um, then if you have the um, acceleration or the velocity here times the acceleration times t, then it's going to calculate out a new velocity. But basically the acceleration is not changing. And then the same thing for the, this is multiplied by the position, the velocity, and the acceleration to estimate the new position. And this is like the C matrix on uh, normal uh, state space. So there's uh, a couple ways of calculating the, the Kalman gains. And what I'm going to do is concentrate on the steady state Kalman gains. And the reason why is because you really can't calculate the um, 
an updated version of the common gains unless you have a good idea of how the measurement noise uh, and the uh, process noise is changing, the process covariance is changing. So uh, most people find it hard to calculate the measurement noise and the uh, process noise. And so what they end up doing is they just kind of fudge numbers until they get the desired results. And if you're going to do that, you might as well just use alpha, beta, gamma filters, which I'll get into later. But um, in Dan Simon's book, he has a way of calculating out the steady state gains and uh, or common gains and coming down here. This, the formulas here, it's got a lot of variables to it. He has what he calls the target maneuvering index, uh, which is this term here. And in the book, there's a square, and that's wrong. In the errata, it looks like this. And I can show you how I figured that out. So down here, I calculate out the, uh, the gains. And you can see he's kind of calculating out an alpha, a beta, a gamma, the, using the process noise and the, and the covariance. And the, this is the uh, three common gains, because you need to have one for position, one by, for the velocity error, and one for the acceleration error. So um, then if I were to do this calculation without the maneuvering index and uh, do the uh, Riccati uh, calculations, uh, 100 iterations, the uh, common gain should converge. And you can see I, I start out with uh, an estimate here for the uh, process covariance. And I can change this around a little bit. And it's not going to change the number that's uh, the common gains at all. Uh, it'll probably converge much earlier than 100 iterations. But the thing that I noticed when I ran this um, simulation through the, in the book is that originally this number, this method of calculating the uh, common gains did not match the version I had here, and it was all due to the error in the uh, tracking command, which is up here. When this was a, in the book, when I, when I followed the example, this was a squared, and uh, you can see this doesn't match that. So, you know, it, you really need to go th work through the examples in the book, if there are examples, or make up your own examples like what I did here. So let's move on down. So now I've got the common gains. Now, a common filter is not that much different from an observer. The big difference is how the gains are being calculated. The observer gains are calculated by um, placing poles so you're trying to make the uh, observer model or states converge using uh, poles to reduce the error. And the um, Kalman filter uses the, some st statistical calculation, this Riccati equation, that will f find the optimal gains for reducing the errors as uh, quickly as possible or minimizing the errors. So um, here I was just playing around, so we'll ignore that. Now. If you are going to do, use a common filter and you don't have the process noise or the measurement noise, then uh, what you really should use is what I call an alpha, beta, gamma filter, or it's actually called an alpha, beta, gamma uh, filter in the book. And this is a very simple way of calculating the alpha, beta, gamma filter. This is the, uh, uh, the gain for the, for the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. And if I made this a 3-3, three, three, it would be uh, closing the error like uh, there are three poles at, uh, um, like three real poles, but this is more of a Butterworth. Uh, this 1-2-2 two, two is more of um, having the Butterworth uh, filter type uh, coefficients. And basically what you end up doing with this is you just change the gain or the, the frequency, the bandwidth here, till you get the desired result. And it's much simpler than trying to go through the Riccati equation or this other method up above where uh, there's about 10 steps to calculating out the gains. So now let's see how this really works. And uh, first what I do is I start out by estimating the new state, which is done here. And again, um, x is uh, perfect data or actual data. 
And then what I'm doing is I'm adding noise. So I'm calculating measurement noise and process noise. And you can see that the standard deviations are here. So now what I'm um, doing here is I'm calculating uh, an imperfect measured position. So I'm adding process noise, measurement noise. Um, I'm truncating it due to uh, the resolution. And so this is not going to be a, um, a perfect number, as you'll see. And then I have, um, OK, this is the new predicted value. And that's using the common filter gains times the measurement that we get from the device. This is the measured position. And we subtract the, uh, uh, well, this is C times F times, well, this is the estimated position. And uh, then what we return is the uh, perfect position, the measured position, and the estimated position. So working through the example, I'm doing a, a few iterations and uh, I'm going to plot the positions. So let me explain what's happening here. On this side I've got the actual measured and estimated positions and on this axis I've got the measured and estimated error. So the actual position or you know the perfect position is this red line that goes at, at a slope and basically uh, because the um, the actual position or perfect positions are going at a constant velocity, uh, you'd expect it, the, the slope to be level. The measured position is this green line. Hopefully you can see that. And you can see that it's kind of bouncing all over the place. And that's due to the, the um, measurement error, the quantizing the jitter. So now I've got the estimated position, and this is com comes from the Kalman filter. So this is what you want to look at. This um, magenta line is the estimated position from the Kalman filter. And you can see it's uh, still pretty noisy, but it's a lot better than the, uh, the measured position. So let's take a look at the errors. So I got a light blue and a uh, dark blue. And uh, you can see that the measured error is here. And it's, going, it's about 2 millimeters, a little bit more than 2 millimeters here. And then uh, the estimated error from the Kalman filter is much smoother and just a little bit less. Now let's look at the velocity. And here's where it really makes a difference. OK, you'd expect the velocity to be relatively constant. And you can see the actual velocity is. But the measured velocity is jumping all over the place. And the reason why is because what it's, we're doing is we're taking, uh, well, let's see if I can just click over here. I'm taking the um, measured position minus the measured position from the time before and dividing it by the time. And the time might not be exactly 10 milliseconds. So you can see that the velocity is going to vary all over the place. But the estimated velocity from the Kalman filter is very, very close to what the actual velocity is. And this is one of the significant parts or uh, things for PLCs, because on the PLC forums, I'm always being asked, or we're always being asked, how do I calculate a velocity? And they want to have a velocity that they can display. And if you don't care about phase lag, this is just fine um, just using a low pass filter. But you can see that, um, well, it's really actually pretty difficult to see that there's phase lag here because the velocities are constant. But let's take a look at accelerations. And again, this is the. Uh, significance of the Kalman filter is even more important here. You can see that the uh, uh, measured acceleration is jumping up and down up to well, over 100 uh, meters per second squared. That's 10, that's 10 g's of error. That's huge. That's unusable. So basically there is no way that you could calculate a usable acceleration using this technique where you take the, the uh, current uh, measured position minus two times the position before plus the position before that divide by the time squared and uh, that's the uh, the simple way of calculating an acceleration and you can see that it's just not usable whereas if I use the Kalman filter the uh, estimated acceleration is very very close to the actual acceleration of zero and you gotta remember we're going at a constant velocity so the acceleration should be zero
this is plotting out the errors and uh, again the, uh, uh, the actual and estimated acceleration And now we're going to talk about uh, the implementation. And the, again, this is the uh, Kalman games, and I use the alpha, beta, gamma technique, where this could be a three or a two, or you can actually find other coefficients that might converge faster. But I like to use the uh, Butterworth uh, combination. And then if I work out the math um, and simplify it, you can see that I have this array where this is the current position current uh, velocity, the, the current um, acceleration state, and then this is the um, estimated times the uh, gain, or this is this is measured minus the estimated um, multiplied by the gain that gives you the new position. And you can see that I'm doing this for the position, velocity, and acceleration. And here I'm just trying to uh, simplify it a little bit more, or finding different forms just to uh, make the calculations a, bit, a little bit simpler. So uh, the main point of all this is that common filters are not that hard to implement. If you want to use the simple method where you're using alpha, beta, gamma filters where you just multiply uh, or choose a bandwidth. And unless you can calculate the uh, process noise or you have some way of measuring the process noise and the measurement noise, you really are just better off using the alpha, beta, gamma filter because like you can see here, you're going to get 95% of the benefits with only 5% of the effort. That's all. Bye.